to law of international project finance. The structuring and financing of projects is a specialist discipline. Project financing is presently used in connection with the financing of large-scale infrastructure projects throughout the world, such as airports, roads, and power stations, oil and gas, and mining projects, as well as building of schools, hospitals, and prisons under the public-private partnership programs around the world. What distinguishes project financing from other forms of commercial secured lending is that the financing structure places significant reliance on the cash flows generated by the project itself, without the need for full credit support from the project sponsors. This is why it's described as limited recourse or even non-recourse financing. This reliance on revenue streams means that project finance lenders will perform detailed specialist evaluations of the project and its ability to generate revenue, and will continue to monitor the project closely throughout the lifetime of the loan. This is a far closer involvement than in respect of corporate loans, where the lending decision will largely be based on the balance sheet and general credit worthiness of the borrower. The course is divided into four separate modules. The first module, titled Loan Facilities, introduces you to key provisions of standard loan agreements, including financial and operative provisions, representations and warranties, conditions precedent, covenants, and events of default. Solid understanding of these principles is critical for understanding project financing transactions. The second module, titled Introduction to Project Finance, introduces you to key legal issues in a project finance structure and provides you with an overview of a typical finance structure. It then analyzes typical sources of funding, including the role of export credit agencies and multilateral development banks, and issues related to concessions and state aid issues in the EU. The third module, titled Risk Identification, Allocation and Mitigation in Project Finance Transactions, looks at key risks in project finance transactions such as completion risk, political risk, environmental risk, and others, and analyzes ways in which such risks tend to be mitigated in project documentation. Finally, the fourth module, titled Project Finance Documentation, examines key project finance documents, including loan documentation, sponsor support agreement, construction contract, operation maintenance agreement, offtake agreement, structuring of security packages, and direct agreements and step-in rights. The starting point in your studies is, of course, your study guide, which introduces and explains the main concepts of the course. It is not, however, intended to replace your independent study of essential reading materials, but rather to help you navigate those other materials effectively. A few words about exam preparation. When preparing for your exam, always make sure that you are able to meet all of the learning outcomes for each of the relevant sections. Try to respond to all of the activities in your study guide before you look at the responses. And of course, make sure to read and attempt to answer simple exam questions. When answering an exam question, spend some time planning your response in order to ensure that it's well-structured, substantiated by evidence, and clear to follow. Always delve into answering the exact question posed and do not waste time on long background sections because you will not get any points for that. Also, make sure that you don't merely regurgitate the theory but that you critically apply theory to the facts of the relevant fact pattern. I hope that you find the study guide and accompanying materials useful and interesting, and that this course will be beneficial for your future studies and career. Mm -hmm.